You may have heard the quote, success is a journey, not a destination. And it's spot on for many Aussie athletes who often have to take a long road to achieve success. So we're heading off on our own journey, fueled by Ampol, Australia's own, to discover some of these stories. And today, we're heading to Robertson in the spectacular Southern Highlands of New South Wales. Robertson is where the journey began for a rugby league legend, a tough, hard-working bloke who laid it all on the line for his team. Hindy, great to see you. We're in Robertson, where your journey began. We've got the Hindmarsh Pavilion up there, Hindmarsh Lane. There is a lot of history in the Hindmarsh family in this part of the world. Yeah, there is, mate. Yeah, I grew up here, moved out when I was 18, but seven generations of dairy farmers on this land. The showground was actually donated by, by the Hindmarshes to the Show Society. So, yeah, there's a lot of, lot of history in Robertson and around the Southern Highlands from the Hindmarsh name. So, yeah, very proud of it. And you just grew up in that house just over there? Yeah, less than... 200 metres. Looking back now, you know, it was, it was a great upbringing. Mm. You know, living in Sydney now, having grown up on a dairy farm for 18 years, the things I learnt, it taught me a lot. It helped me be a, a better rugby league player than what I would have been otherwise. And when did the footy bug bite you? Oh, it would have been 12. I played a lot of rugby league at school with mates just in the, in, at lunchtime and at recess and all that type of stuff. So finally went, well, I know, I'll go sign up and play for the, for the uh, local rugby league team. Unfortunately, nothing for Robertson in my age group here. So neighbouring town, Mossvale. Uh, Mossvale Dragons, I signed up for the under 12 B side there. Um, first game? First game was actually here. My first ever game uh, playing for Mossvale was on the home track against Mittagong, but didn't really know the rules, but loved every minute of it. And how did you end up from here, this humble ground here, fantastic ground by the way, all of a sudden at Parramatta? Yeah, a different journey I suppose, like never you know, growing up here, never thinking of ever playing NRL, that wasn't on, on the list, but a friend of mine, Scott Geddes, who actually also played in the NRL, he was in a lower age group with me at, at Mossvale. They had some talent scouts come to watch him, mm. and I had a good game on the day, and, and I was invited to Fairfield Patrician Mellors on a scholarship there to do their rugby league program. And how did you go making the transition from a small country town <laughs> to the big smoke? I can see you uh, laughing about it now. I, did, I didn't make the transition, right. mate. <laughs> Look, this was my... It was my life. I didn't. I didn't think I needed to go anywhere else or see anything else. And it was. Too, it was too much for me. It was way too much for me. And I didn't handle it. So I lasted about three to four weeks. And then I started back at Mossvale High School again. But I was very. I was very fortunate because I threw away an opportunity. But I still managed to go on and play NRL. So how was it when the opportunity presented itself? And as a young bloke, you walk into the Parramatta Rugby League club for the first time. Were you just looking up at these guys and thinking? How am I going to go here? I was nervous. I look, players I used to watch as a kid growing up, and all of a sudden now I'm playing with them. It was, it was, it was a massive deal. It was overwhelming, and I'd started full-time training at this point. So I was straight out of high school at Mossvale, moved straight up to Sydney, which again I still didn't like. So every opportunity I had, I'd come back home to Robertson, and I came back one week after about four weeks of pre-season training. I told my mum I'm not going back. I love this stuff when you've got the choice: do I push on? or do I come back home and, and give it all away? What fueled you at that stage to push on and think, I really need to make a crack of this? Well, I didn't want to make a crack of it. That was a thing, um, which sounds quite strange, but it was, I, as I said, I came home and I told my mum I'm not going back and she wouldn't, let, she wouldn't allow that. Yeah, it was, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have played rugby league. What's your greatest memory on a rugby league field? on that World Cup tour in 2000, you know, and, and, and making the, the kangaroo side. Got selected for the, for the final, the World Cup final against the Kiwis, ended up scoring a try, and uh, that was a good feeling. You've given me goosebumps thinking about it. What is it like when you pull on that kangaroo's jumper for the first time? You said the green and gold. That is a very proud moment, but I think it's, proud, it's a proud moment for... because it makes your family proud. I think that I, I enjoyed that. Talk to you about finals, losing finals, getting so close to what you're there for at the end of the day. It's a, it's yeah. a brutal question, but th that's what you're there for, isn't it? It is. That's what. That's why. That's why I think I played the game. You know, watch growing up, watching Mel Manning cry on Grand Final Day, and yeah. I wasn't even a Raiders fan. But just those sort of memories burn into your brain, and, and you want to, you know, follow that journey that they did and, and get to that ultimate goal, which was to win a Grand Final and hold up the shield. And unfortunately, I didn't get to do it. Um, and that's something that's always going to haunt me. Um, but you still think about it, or? You do, yeah, even in late into retirement, it's still something that you're never going to have that opportunity to get again and you can't replicate that feeling. The Newcastle one in 2001 probably stings the most because we were such a great team that year. And what makes a great team? Enjoy playing footy with each other. 
you know. That's a great answer. It, that's, and that's, regardless of the winning or the losing, um, we just enjoyed each other's company and we had a good time doing it. It was a great, great mob of boys. So how do you reflect sitting here now under the shadows of the Hindmarsh Pavilion here in Robertson where the journey started on your NRL career? An amazing journey, incredible journey. Fortunate. Very, fortunate. very fortunate, yeah. You know, because there are a lot of great rugby league players out there as kids and they just don't get the opportunities. And luckily for me, I got the opportunity um, and I went on with it. And just grateful that I had, the, I suppose, the support from both parents to, you know, take me to training and all that stuff. I, you know, always thanking Mum, she's only just down the road there, but for what she did with me. And, and Dad, late Dad, he's, he died a few years ago, but just things he taught me, like, taught me how to tackle. And that's what I made build a career on, was tackling people. So, yeah, yeah. And for all the youngsters out there that want to achieve some success in their lives to fuel their journey to be successful, what advice would you give them about achieving success in their field? Listen. Listen, you're not an expert at that age. You've got to start listening to your coaches. There are going to be speed humps along the way but you've just got to learn how to ride them out and, and find that support group or that support network that you can bounce ideas off and, and go through it. There's so many things I can tell them. Hard work, hard work it takes. And sometimes you're not going to like it, but you just got to push through it.